My name is John Pope. I have a company called Infrared Building Inspections and we have a website detectorleak.co.nz. We specialise in thermal imaging, moisture inspections and this video is about how to use a non-invasive Trotec T650 moisture meter. I really like non-invasive meters because you don't have to put any holes or do any damage to the um, surface area of what you're testing. However, there are some pitfalls with it and today I'm going to go over the basics. Um, first off, turning it on. It may seem like something simple, but with this particular meter, it, the way you hold it is the way you're going to use it. If you turn it on and you're holding your hand too far up the meter, then it will give a higher reading or a lower reading once it's set and a higher reading when you're setting it. It does adjust to the atmosphere, so it is critical how you turn it on. So this is how I turn it on. You don't want to be walking ar around, you don't want to have it near a wall when you turn it on. You don't want to be, as I said, holding it up here. You hold it, how are you going to use it? Try and avoid putting your thumb on the front because it does increase the readings. As you can see there, the numbers are going up slightly. Hold it down the side. So when you put it on the wall, you're going to use it the same way. This meter has a range up to 200 digits, although it's very rarely you can get it over to go read higher than 160. So the acceptable ranges um, in the manufacturer's book for this meter is up to 40 digits is considered normal because everything has moisture in it. You're going to get a reading of some sort of reading on, on what you're using it on. Between 40 and below 80 is considered damp and 80 and above is considered wet. I found doing inspections in New Zealand that the a lot of the time the readings, particularly when you have timber behind the jib, the timber will increase the reading slightly. You may get normal readings 38, 39. I think 40 being the baseline um, between normal and damp is a, is a little bit low. Uh, it doesn't really give any margin for error. So I tend to only call something damp if the reading is above 45. You do have to also consider when you're doing your inspections, um, the more dense the material is, the higher the reading will be. So if you're testing on a piece of timber that's 100 mil thick, you might get readings consistently in the low 40s, so you'd have to consider those to be normal as well. When you're using your moisture meter, it's important that you use it properly. Now that you've learned how to set it properly, it needs to be used properly. Um, if you have it too close to a corner when you're using it, it will increase the reading because it starts to pick up the the other wall that you're close to. Metal will give false readings on a moisture meter. You can normally tell it's metal because it'll be a small isolated place but it is important to always carry a magnet which I have a small one here which I've had made up. It's a high powered one and you simply just run it down the area that you think where the metal could be um, particularly if you've got a high reading and then you can eliminate it as a false reading if that is the case. Curved surfaces and that will also obviously affect the reading and generally you don't use the moisture meter on exterior plaster etc. Um, it's mainly because of the texture but also some of the exterior plaster systems um, such as solid plaster systems have um, metal mesh within the plaster and of course you'll get high readings wherever you use it. Whenever you're using a moisture meter, you should always use it comparatively. In other words, you take a comparative reading on a similar surface somewhere else. And when I'm doing my inspections, I always photograph those readings so that there's plenty of normal readings within the report. Uh, typically, you'll do the bottom corner of, of each window and that you'll take a photo of, even though you may take random readings all around the window. Um, <clears throat> And, and that will um, give the person who reads your report something to compare against. A hot day or a cold day doesn't really affect the readings at all. You'll find the readings will stay pretty much consistent wherever you're checking a house, whatever the weather. Obviously in the summer period, some areas will, will dry out um, due to lack of weather, but uh, experience has taught me that particularly leaks in walls and also um, other companies like Brands in New Zealand have done testing and found that uh, when moisture gets um, trapped in a wall it can stay in there for um, periods well over a year. Generally with ceiling leaks um, you will get visible damage um, so always look visually as well as using a meter. And of course with my business um, doing thermal imaging as well we're continually looking through the camera for any sign of or any anomaly which will show up uh, generally as a different temperature within the camera picture. 
of course with thermal imaging it's seen temperature so even though it does see moisture you can't call it moisture or confirm it as moisture without using your moisture meter um, and it's great the camera is great for finding small small um, um, spots such as a small roof leak as well and you, sometimes often it's hard to find with the meter so I can look through the camera and locate the spot with the moisture meter. When you're actually placing your meter on the wall to take your reading keep it as much at right angles to the wall as you can. As you increase the angle of your meter it will change the reading slightly so it's a good idea to try and keep it square with the wall and again re remembering not to put it you know too close to a corner or in the corner of a skirting um, as you'll get a false increased reading. I will be doing another video which uh, talks more about um, different types of materials that you'll come across within a building envelope and how that affects the moisture meter readings. Thank you.